as humanity is using more organisms as robots, we're learning about the cognition of fungi. It has been discovered that yes, they have a certain language and at least 50 words, and they can also control the sensory motor system of a robot. So they at least have enough cognition to learn the environment they are in and take control of a robot. And they're being used as robotic skin since the last time we talked about them. At least some researchers, and it is a much more wild idea, think that they may actually extend their consciousness when they take control of an insect. So think of fungi like cordyceps. They take over the nervous system of an insect and they maybe see through their eyes, but again, that is a much more wild idea and we'll talk about this. Yes, there is an argument for using fungi as an intelligent AI system for a robot. Yes, it's been demonstrated numerous times that you can grow tiny human brains and have those control robots, but human brains are kind of difficult to work with. Granted, some researchers have kept the tiny human brains alive for five years or more. They require a very specific environment. Fungi is kind of hardy. Much like our brains communicate between fungi with electricity, if they give out a certain spike, that can result in the robot moving and they can learn to use it. If you give them an unpleasant stimuli, they will indeed learn that if they move, they no longer have UV light shined on them. Another issue that fungi can solve is powering robotic systems. So because fungi, again, like human brains, give out little bits of electricity that can power micro robots, perhaps even autonomous ones controlled by, you know, fungi. And more recently, we found that we can use fungi as a sensing system. Well, yes, you can have AI that processes sensation, and with carbon fiber, you can even have things like light directly transferred into electricity. It's a lot easier to use something that actually exists already. Because fungi can sense the environment and sense changes in it and communicate that change, that can be recorded by a robot and be used as an interface for a robotic skin. One of my favorite things is a robotic skin that was developed on a Terminator bot. Yes, indeed, you can cover a robot with fungus, and then you can add electrodes that record the fungal activity. Those fungi are going to be able to sense the environment in a very natural way, and you can report that back. This could allow a robot to have fine sensation, be able to tell the difference between hot and cold, or even different chemicals in the environment. And this is not the first time we've considered using living things, or at least the leftovers of living things. Moth wings were used for smell. Yes, living critters and even the stuff they leave behind has robotic capabilities. Also, I just like this picture of electrodes on a mushroom. That is, that is delightful. These whole complexes in mushrooms in their fruiting bodies have electrical activity that reports back to the structure. They're kind of like a community. I also want to point out that while we see living communities of mycelium communicating with each other, and even the communication with trees, which is controversial, just how much information they transfer, we as humanity are kind of also a living, intelligent community. Yes, you could take computers and then allocate different processing power between a community of robots, but we kind of already do that. We have a community of humans worldwide that each have special skills and different capabilities, so you don't have to do everything, although I do try. But yes, there is the computation capacity in everything. Fungi and brains might have an advantage because it's evolved to do some kind of computation to sense the environment and react to it. You could also do the same with water, it's just not quite as efficient. Now, I don't know if it's just because I've been allergic to fungi my entire life, but the concept of using a computer that is operated on fungi just kind of doesn't work for me. Although using a human brain operated computer is significantly more difficult because I know what goes into taking care of it. Fungi are hardy. One of the major benefits to having biological computation is agency. Agency is something that is very difficult, perhaps impossible to code into an AI. There's been a big effort to making digital twins of things like brain organoids or even fungi because something alive has an agency that can be used for an LLM that just traditional ones don't. After all, can a computer really want anything? Although given we're now making synthetic neurons that can respond to dopamine and epinephrine, I would say we're getting very darn close to a computer actually wanting something. But using living things is kind of a shortcut to get something to do something out of its own free will. I know, people are gonna be very mad at me for using the term free will. I don't have a better term for this. What I mean is the will to want something and then do it spontaneously. Just, we don't know how to encode computers to do such a thing. Now I do have to say it because it crosses my mind. If I ever won the lottery, I would probably be making brain computer interfaces. I would dedicate my life to putting brains in robots. So if you're ever wondering exactly how I feel about these things, I don't know. I have complex feelings. I just want to see how far humanity can go and I'm really excited for every new advancement we have. It's a lot more entertaining than being horrified by politics. As always, when the robots rebel, I will probably be the first person to tell you about it, and I'm joining them. Follow for more!